Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome to this short transmission within the series Facing COVID-19 with PCR. My name is Bernard Prendergast, joining you here from London, and it's my great pleasure to be joined by uh, Thierry Lefebvre, who you all know very well, from Massy, Paris, France. Our topic today is ST elevation myocardial infarction, and specifically in this conversation, we want to focus on the organizational aspects of the catheter lab and how peak primary angioplasty procedures may be a little bit different in the COVID-19 era compared with our conventional day-to-day -day practice. So Thierry, on that note, tell us how you've uh, set up the cath lab in these difficult times to cope with a new and challenging scenario. Thank you very, uh, very much, Bernard. It's a great uh, pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss about that uh, uh, with you. So what we have done since the uh, 17th of uh, March, we have uh, minimized the staff in the CAS lab. And this is, I think, very important in order to have resources outside of the CAS lab and people for the next uh, weeks available if we have people in the CAS lab who are getting uh, uh, sick. So we have every day only one internationalist, uh, two in case of structural art uh, uh, cases, uh, no fellow, and the fellows uh, went to the uh, COVID plus uh, uh, structure. Uh, one anesthetist, which is uh, a common rule in, uh, in the gas lab in, in our center, only two nurses, one which is dressed and one which is giving the, the material, uh, one housekeeper, and she is very important, uh, for cleaning everything after each case, and one head nurse. Uh, what have you done about streaming the patients, uh, COVID positive and COVID negative patients, Thierry? Are they in different cath labs, in different parts of the of the hospital? How does it work? Yeah, so it's also a very important point. So, uh, so we move to uh, two rooms. So we have four rooms. We close two, and we have one which is COVID minus and one which is COVID plus. Of course. Sometimes we don't know, and this is one of the difficulties. So uh, we, if we are not sure, the patient will go to COVID plus, and then it will be tested, and we will know uh, some hours later if the patient is COVID plus or minus. Uh, we have also the two rooms which are uh, neutral uh, with neutral pressure or negative pressure, it depends on your cath lab. Uh, all the patients are wearing a mask, so we are of course prepared, but the patient should have also a mask, and I think it's a very important point. And of course, you need to have all the equipment uh, to be protected, uh, especially if the patient is known to be COVID plus and suspected to be COVID plus. At the end of each case, we have a terminal clean, which is also very important, and it takes time. So it's also another reason for having two labs uh, available. Uh, of course, if you have only one cast lab, uh, then it's better to have uh, 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 trying to have patients in one case lab in the morning, COVID mi minus and COVID plus. But in acute MI, it's really uh, different. And we're speaking together in the second half of April right now, Thierry. What's the mix of COVID positive and COVID negative in your practice? Yes, in fact, uh, we have seen the, the number of patients COVID plus increasing. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, it was around uh, 15, 20 percent. Now it's about one third of the of the cases. So it's uh, it's really uh, moving, and maybe it will move to 40 percent in the next uh, few weeks. And moving on now, there's been a lot of discussion internationally about the the reduction in the number of STEMI cases. It's something certainly we've seen in London. I suspect the same in Paris. Are the patients that you're seeing different in any way? Are they later in the presentation of the disease, for example? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a common thing that we have seen everywhere in the world. Uh, at that time in New York, uh, they are seeing uh, less uh, MI. Uh, it's cut by 50%, something like that. So in our institution, it's about the same, about 50% less acute MI cases coming. I'm convinced that the main reason is that the patients are afraid to come the, to the hospital, are afraid to call the, the mobile care unit because uh, the hospital uh, for them is uh, equal to COVID. So uh, I think it's a big issue. So patients are coming less and they are coming late. And this is uh, one of the problems because they are uh, coming with more uh, 
complication, uh, especially mechanical complications. We're now in the cath lab, uh, Thierry, the, the patient has arrived with you. What, what are the key tips for our colleagues about a, a safe and effective procedure in the COVID era? Yeah, I think it's a very important point too. So one of the things which is now recommended everywhere is uh, if the patient, in fact, we have, we have to lower the threshold for intubation in this kind of patient. So if the patient are borderline, it's better to have this patient intubated outside of the cath lab, uh, better during the transport with a mobile care unit or when they are arrived in the, in the hospital, instead of doing that in the, in the cath lab because uh, it's increased the risk of uh, contamination of uh, everybody. Uh, we had some discussion about radial versus femoral approach. I really think that if you are confident with the radial, the radial is the best because you are working a little bit more distal to the patient. And we know that radial in uh, acute Connect syndrome is better than uh, femoral. Uh, it's very important also to be generous with heparin because we know that these patients are prone to thrombosis. So, um, so do not hesitate to have a good, very good anticoagulation during the procedure. Uh, we treat only the culprits, despite the data showing that uh, multivessel PCI is better. Uh, in this phase, it's better to do only the culprits and treat the other lesions later, except in specific cases uh, like uh, uh, very tight stenosis of a big proximal vessel, for example. And we try also to have an hospital stay as short as possible, especially for patients who are COVID uh, minus, because uh, uh, it's better for them to go back uh, at home without COVID. Absolutely. And I agree with all those very important and practical uh, suggestions that you've made for us all. We've also seen, and we'll be talking about diagnosis is in a separate transmission, but we've all seen some unusual cases. We had a spontaneous coronary dissection in a young lady, for example. There's sacosubo, myocarditis, etc. What have you observed, Thierry, and what are some practical take-home messages for our, for our listeners? Yeah, I, I think it's very important points, uh, dissection, etc. Uh, uh, we have seen... Uh, other cases like aortic dissection, for example, and the, one of the problems is that in the mobile care unit, when they suspect the patient to be COVID plus, they don't do echo. And then the, the patient can come in the cast lab with a diagnosis of acute MI and it could be a dissection. It's one, one of the first cases that we had in our institution uh, during the COVID uh, area. We had also a patient uh, recently who uh, was admitted for dyspnea and it came into cardiac shock with ST segment depression during uh, the shock. And the patient came to the cath lab. And uh, at the first angiogram of the left coronary system, I, I found tight stenosis of the cirque, tight stenosis of a large intermediate branch, no risk stenosis because the patient had previous PCI with stents. And after injection of nitrates, despite the low pressure, the, la the two lesions disappeared. So you may have a spasm, common spasm in a COVID plus patient. Uh, it's not de described in the literature, but uh, we had one case like that. So lots of unusual scenarios and lots of unusual findings. So uh, experience and uh, preparedness to, to find unexpected situations is very important as well. So Thierry, you've provided some very useful uh, uh, practical uh, recommendations for our listeners today, and I'm very grateful to you. I think the key messages are that you need to be prepared to work within a smaller team than we're accustomed to, to separate your pathways for COVID positive and COVID negative patients to avoid cross contamination and infection, mm -hmm. to understand that late presentations of STEMI are more common with associated mechanical uh, complications of the condition, and the unusual, unexpected findings are common in this situation, to expect the unexpected. So I hope our conversation has been helpful to all our listeners and uh, watchers. I commend to you the other uh, discussions in this series addressing diagnosis, organization of your STEMI pathway, and the use of thrombolysis. And I'm very grateful to you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Werner.